Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Drive Wild. Today we are talking about Scruber scheme reaped whopping forty million dollars in bogus surge fares for hundreds of shady Uber drivers. Fed. So recently, I got an email from one of my subscribers, BC. Thank you so much for emailing me about this and making this video possible. Now that also said, this describes a system called Scruber, and according to BC, this may not be as much of a fraud situation as it claims to be. So with that said, we are talking about everything that is being said in this email and article, how it actually is for DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub drivers, Uber and rideshare drivers, and customers, and everything in between. So with that said, let's get started. Scruber sounds like Para, and the fake GPS is just normal app. In the story, I don't see the fraud here. Well, let's read the article and see if that's the case. These Uber drivers took passengers for a $40 million ride. A pair of fraudsters sold hacked smartphones and fake apps, including one dubbed Scruber, to more than 800 Uber drivers as part of a scheme that conned customers into paying bogus surge pricing fares, federal prosecutors said Wednesday. Now, how exactly would they be paying surge pricing through Uber? Like, how exactly would that even work? Because usually Uber sets those prices. We don't. But, but what is happening here? Ilya Howe Paldiel, 52, of Queens, and Carlos Arturo Alrez Palacios, 54, were arraigned Wednesday on federal wire fraud and money laundering charges in Brooklyn Federal Court. Okay, so that is nothing to do with Uber. That's money laundering and wire fraud. How would they use Uber to do that? The pair reaped more than 1.5 million for themselves out of the 40 million in ill-gotten fares from the shady drivers, and even bragged about the upcoming flow of cash at the scheme's outset in 2018, according to court documents. You know, Scruber is like drugs. Once you get into it, you'll get withdrawals when you can't get your fix. Saul Rez wrote Pal Deal document state. All gig apps do that. Like all gig apps do that to a certain degree. They do that especially to new drivers. That's that two weeks where they'll send you like a bunch of orders or so, and then they'll suddenly start dialing it back, and then you'll find yourself working more and more hours. All gig apps do that to a certain degree. That's not Scruber specific. The scheme worked by having Uber passengers pay fraudulent surge fees, which the rideshare company charges when demand is higher in a certain geographic area. The drivers who'd effectively jump the line to receive them, prosecutors said. So Uber passengers were paying Uber more money to receive orders that had a better payout system. That sounds a lot more like Para. Like that is similar to the hidden tip system and that is similar to just knowing your market. That That's not a surge fee thing. I'm starting to see the struggle with finding the fraudulent part of this. If you're picking up somebody from an airport during prime hours, that's going to cost the customer more just another day or during off-peak hours going from home to anywhere else. Hal Deal and Suarez made that possible by selling drivers hacked smartphones for $600 a pop with a suite of three illicit apps document state. Those apps included Scruber, a program that allowed drivers to see prospective Uber riders' destinations and fares before they accepted the rides, according to the documents. The dishonest drivers could then cherry pick only the most profitable and lucrative rides offered to them, the document state. Yes! Yeah, so that's just having transparency. That is literally just having transparency on the platform. Did you even think about that? Do you know how to think? I love how the entire article is trying to make it sound like transparency is fraud. Like transparency is not fraud. Lack of transparency is where the fraud is actually going to take place. What kind of dumbass logic is that? Another app called Fake GPS allowed drivers to fake or spoof their locations in Uber's legit application so they would appear as if they were in an area with surging fares. The documents contend. Okay. Okay, so maybe that's where I'd be like, now you're pushing it a little too far. You can't try to capitalize on a bonus that isn't actually there. That just makes no sense. Demand for the pair's criminal charges was high. 
at several points, the Fed saw long lines of drivers of cars with taxi limousine commission plates waiting to meet with pal deal according to the documents. So what I heard was Uber had some real competition being that this is an app that allows you to receive better paying options and work with better paying customers and they didn't like that. I don't understand what the problem is here. The whole spoof their locations thing is pretty messed up, but the whole seeing where the most profitable and lucrative rides are available, that's just another day. When pal deal sent a a June 26 message to drivers offering help or phone pickup at his home. Investigators conducted surveillance, saw more than 20 vehicles, the documents charge. Sounds like you had a fleet and a good amount of drivers, if only they were doing this legitimately. A spokesperson for U.S. Attorney Brian Peace declined to comment on whether the 800 alleged cheating drivers who are considered co-conspirators soon will face criminal charges as well. As alleged, the defense Defendants sought to enrich themselves by corrupting the rideshare market at the expense of unsuspecting passengers and hardworking drivers who played by the rules, he said in a state. Yeah, they did this in a way where it was shady. And yeah, I don't like how Para handled themselves either. But at the end of the day, the only thing that they did that I see a major problem is, is spoofing locations. Like, if they just had a platform that paid more fairly than Uber does, then I would say this is a quality service, and they shouldn't be convicted for competing with Uber. Pal Deal and Suarez pled not guilty to the charges and were released on $210,000 bonds. The pair each face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. And yet there are still people stealing food and legitimately doing crimes that are just running around totally free to do whatever they want. But because hardworking people are actually earning a living the right way, they're the ones at fault. That's the only thing I see. Here. The alleged fraud by 800 backed actors not only took money out of the pockets of hardworking drivers, it forced rideshare companies to further limit access to work for tens of thousands of TLC drivers, said Josh Gold, an Uber spokesperson. Of course, Uber would have a problem. Is that actually the motivation here? It's amazing how the same people who were fighting to get the laws that were imposed on them removed so that way they could have more freedom to do whatever they want to the drivers are now working with them on this. Pick a lane. Are you against how NYC works or are you not? David Dew, the city's taxi and limousine commissioner, said the dastardly drivers stole from both passengers and their fellow drivers. We are working closely with the FBI to identify any TLC drivers who use these illegal apps and ensure they never drive for hire in New York City again, and if feasible, recover any overcharges for those harmed, Do said in a statement. But the 800 bad actors were earning legitimately, technically. Like, sure, they tried to capitalize on an opportunity, but that's no different than any other entrepreneur there. This is my opinion. Worth what you pay for it. Then you pay me. There you go. If this isn't just a display of the political theater that takes place in the gig economy, I don't know what is. Scroober is very similar to Para, and quite honestly, I'm not a fan of how they handled themselves. But if they had 800 drivers that they could work with in that general area and they worked legitimately to help drivers make more money and make their own gig app, they could have possibly done that. Heck, I'm seeing InDrive more in my area. InDrive is another rideshare app in my area now. People act like there's never gonna be any competition with Uber. I respectfully disagree. But the problem is it's never gonna be Uber versus this other big company. Cause yeah, Uber, Lyft, those are the two big companies. They're gonna have to compete with the local options that actually make sense. And I think that's gonna be a good thing for gig workers as a whole. That these companies are gonna eventually be competing with people that are more localized and know the people more closely. Should the two people be held responsible for what has been taking place? Possibly. I feel like they took a lot of terms out of context and they definitely shouldn't have done the 
crap that they did in such a criminal way. But the 800 people who were seeing an opportunity and trying to capitalize on it, I don't know if they should be held responsible in the same way. Because at the end of the day, they were just trying to make more money doing the work they already did. There's nothing wrong with that. No matter how many people like to spin that in that way, there's nothing actually wrong with that. All in all, just do yourself a favor. Keep playing by the book. Otherwise, you might actually end up in these people's situation. Play by the book, diversify your gig portfolio, and develop an exit strategy. So you're not trying to game the system. You're just trying to make the most amount of money in the least amount of time in the safest possible way. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh!